technology. All right, we're live and we're recording. Everything's working, isn't that yeah, lovely technology? It is. <laughs> Thank you, tech goddesses. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Well, uh, here we are. Um, this is Jeannie Russell of Dolphin Touch Wellness Center and Dolphin Energetics and here on Kauai, Hawaii. And I am here with Dr. Lisa Hartwell. And uh, Lisa has been doing some amazing stuff. We got to meet each other in Fiji on this wonderful retreat that we did together. And um, it was just... Uh, we actually roomed together on our because we're both from Hawaii. We flew and together and roomed together. <laughs> and we flew together and everything else all the way to Christmas Island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much going on. Yeah. But yeah, Lisa, why don't you? Um, I would just mess it up terribly. So why don't you introduce yourself? Tell everybody what you do, and uh, we'll get into it. Wonderful. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you again. And yeah, actually just sit here and talk story. Just it's so relaxing for my afternoon, my Tuesday afternoon. Um, I'm over here on Oahu. I'm on a different island, of course. And um, which for those of you that aren't from here, it's about a 25 minute flight. So we're, we're so close, but yet so far from each other. Yes. Um, yeah, and I am a clinical psychologist over here in Honolulu, and I have a few different hats that I wear. Um, the hat that I was wearing in Fiji with um, Jeannie and, oh, how many were there? Less than 30 of us, right? Facilitators over there um, mm -hmm. is part of my business as a retreat business, and my specialty is how anxiety shows up for folks in business and life, and that can look take many different forms, whether it be in relationships or people you work with or feeling stuck in your own business process. Um, so that's really what I do over here. I have a private practice. I have a, uh, what I call a J-O-B, where I work for the state of Hawaii as a forensic psychologist, um, which means I consult with teams who work with the mentally ill who have committed crimes. So we work on giving them services, getting them services, maintaining their legal encumbrances and such. So that's a little bit more of my heady job. Um, and my private practice is really focused on anxiety, one-on-one um, -on -one and couples clients and retreats and workshops. So, yeah. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to ha have you here. And especially at this time, I thought it would be very relevant because of what's going on right now with the COVID. And, you know, there, I don't know if you heard, um, but there were actually six um, suicides here on Kauai last month, six to or more. I don't have the exact, exact numbers here, but, you know, enough to be significant for our small little island. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's challenging to, to know that there's so many um, people out there who are suffering, but they're suffering in silence. They're suffering in uh, a way that uh, really, that there's help out there. And, um, they probably just don't know how to get that help or how to uh, reach out for help. And I thought maybe we could talk about some of those things and some options that people have. Maybe they're not aware of those options and allow that to be kind of a, a resource, you know, if it, this could be a resource for them. And also to allow... Uh, us to talk about maybe some techniques that we can use to overcome. Yeah, yeah. it's so timely, isn't it? It's such a, it, it's interesting because when we flew to Fiji, I remember, you know, meeting you for the first time at the airport and we actually had a discussion about wearing masks on at the airport and on the plane, didn't we? And That's that was, right, because it was just starting. It was just, just starting. starting. And it was mid February. It was the day we, they right the day right after my birthday, and just this whole culmination of things cascaded 
it's it's just interesting. We got to go I there. I had no idea. Be in a bit of a bubble and then, you know, work really hard and then come home to this. And it I, I think the the biggest marker for me has been watching folks who um, more than likely have some underlying um, already have anxiety or some uh, things that they struggle with. And it is, people think we live in paradise and we do. Um, however, it takes a lot of work to live in paradise, uh, to put our lives together. Yes, that's so that's true. Here. So true. Here. Yes. And, yes. I, and, I, and I think it's pushed so many people, so much of our population over the edge that was already doing just okay. And yeah. um, when you strip away 35% unemployment and our entire tourist industry that keeps our islands going, I think it was just a tipping point. And the difference between starting out about being anxious about it, it seemed like there was this developmental thing that happened where it just tipped over into overwhelm. You know, first you're anxious about even just who has it, you know? <laughs> who has this plague out there in the community. Mm -hmm. And we have a very touchy feely community here. We're very warm. I know, not to be able to hug anybody. Not to be able to touch people is uh, outside your own family is just unheard of. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's really so I think that it's been so much, it's been too much of a culmination of so many different factors to push people over the edge has been my observation anyway. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I'm sure you deal with a lot of that, but maybe you can talk about some techniques or some of the ways that you uh, deal with anxiety. I know with us, you know, it, like in the people that I've seen over here, you know, they start out being, oh yeah, it's, you know, they're, they're cool, everything's fine. And then, you know, a couple of nights of insomnia, Mm -hmm. that's a big one over here you know if you can't sleep or you can't uh get enough rest or if you're not eating right or drinking or all of that mm -hmm. you're just it plummets and it goes from everything's okay to nothing's yeah. okay yeah you can't very quickly I, yeah. i've seen it switch and happen very very quickly yeah yeah, and some of that is my observation from that part is that it, well, I've been pretty busy, but I think for the most part, from going from 90 miles an hour of just so much places to be, meetings to attend, kids' events to go to, um, family get togethers to zero. Yeah. You know, came to a screeching halt, and yeah. there was now there's no outlet. So if you're not doing as much during the day, you're not as tired at night, other than you're worried sick all day about this virus and what are people doing? They're, they're, uh, most of my calls were people that were getting somewhat addicted to <laughs> the news feed. And I had to say, let's, let's talk about, let's put it into a treatment plan conversation because you have to stop you're filling your brain up all day instead of being busy in your normal life. There's nothing to do. It's just being filled with this anxiety um, information back in the day, in the beginning, of course, when we didn't know what was going on. Right. Um, and it, you know, I just feel, I feel like every week, every two weeks, mm -hmm. it's not only the new information uh -huh. um, about the virus, but now our nation is engaged in so many different types of new information of things just escalating. So there's this different level of anxiety now that is, I'm a little worried that we're getting very polarized. And when you have that polarization happen within yourself or within people that you care about, you know, it just creates angst, which translates to anxiety, which can go either way. It can go to grief, go to anger, frustration, can go to all these different dimensions. Um, yeah. One of the pieces that I do to work on folks with that is um, instead of kind of wrapping yourself up in it and letting it have its own life, I really encourage people to just wrap it and embrace it and use it as a tool. And I call it, use it as your, as your ally, essentially because it's really trying to help you grow through this time. 
believe it or not, we're all growing right now in leaps and bounds that we never thought possible. And the only way to do that is to shift the mindset around the symptom of anxiety. And before it gets to that kind of overwhelming piece that shifts into grief and despair, which I think is what you're really referring to when it comes to the suicides that are happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, part of it too is uh, realizing that, y you know, reaching out for help. Yes. And reaching out for help and that there are people out there who can help you and can assist you and people like yourself and um, that have experience in working with um, this type of um, issue. Mm -hmm. You know, your specialty of working with people with anxiety, um, that Sorry, is- Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please- <laughs> My phone is coming alive. My phone's <laughs> up just right now. She heard her voice. <laughs> <laughs> My God, shut up, Stevie. We do that all the time at home. <laughs> oh my goodness. And the sound is <laughs> but to to have it where you are in a place where um you can say, I need help. Mm -hmm. Um who can I turn to? Mm -hmm. So what are the some of the resources that people can use when they're feeling really anxious or lost or confused yeah it's depending on who our listeners are today i think it's it's very dependent on the where you live in your state the biggest part is um I, I hope people don't feel like their typical resources have been stripped away i think the natural organic way of how we always get together um was built in to our reaching out mm -hmm. so that you know picture it like it uh, shaking a bottle and the, the cap is getting tighter and tighter and wants to blow off. Well, just by being able to diffuse with your, you know, your hui or your girlfriends or your tribe or whatever you call your group that you are able to just um, process what's going on in your life in a normal situation and that's not happening, you have okay. to create that. And so if my biggest thing is recreate that in a different context, and I think that's what the folks in the, that um, don't have the tipping point of needing more professional help is because they have reached out to their same tribe in ways that works for everyone. Whether, you know, everybody's on Zoom or um, phone calls or some sort of reaching out or even just quick texting. So I would say the first level of that circle is that same circle that you were with before, just making sure that everybody is I always say being a part of your same orchard and reaching out and growing each other and supporting in the way that you always did. It just looks different right now. Mm. Now things are opening up here, which is nice. Um, so I think people are kind of coming out of that initial piece, but I feel like that's where a lot of people, like I said, going from, from 90 to zero, yeah, like we're, you're pushed off the edge, you know? Totally lost, totally yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, um, I, things have opened up here, and I found that, you know, as things are opening up, even for myself, it's, it feels a bit awkward to be around people again, because even it's like, yeah. are you hugging, or you're not hugging? I know. You approach them, you know, uh, who's doing what, and then there's still like this barrier between us between everybody and and it's not just that you know part of it is me too like you know i don't know <laughs> you know because i you've kind of been in your own bubble yeah and your own world and then you're inviting somebody else in and you tend to be a little cautious about doing that and allowing yeah we, we go to the park almost every day to walk ride bike and do a little bit of chi running but um, it, I've, it's funny that I've never noticed it before how people are giving wide berths around each other. You know, like you're on the sidewalk. You never thought twice about just passing someone on the sidewalk and, right. or, you know, riding bike in a way that is respectful, but never thought about space before. And now it's interesting that that's what you see. Somebody will go off of their path just to do the, the six foot piece. And so in my mind, I picture that as 
wow, so you're out here to relax and exercise and, and have some community time together, but you're not really together. <laughs> it's just this other layer of something to think about, you know? Um, so when I think about using the strategies of using that inner circle as support, one of the things that comes to mind is, is really an aware self-awareness and, and understanding that look at prevention more that you look at than at intervention. So if you look at prevention, when you were talking about getting enough sleep and, you know, eating healthy, so you're not taxing your body so much, um, reaching out to folks, at some point, what do you have to do on a personal level as a prevention and preventative measure to um, take care of your anxiety on a daily basis about all of this? Mm -hmm. It could be journaling, it could be Reiki, it could be all of these different modalities that are out there for us, especially online now too. Um, then I would say that next level of when you're needing extra professional support is really about when it starts to interfere with your life. You know, maybe you're arguing more than you used to. Maybe you can't stop snapping at people. Um, maybe you're just overwhelmed. You, your mind won't stop spinning. So it's more about the function of how your day looks. Um, and again, I say that with a caveat because there's a whole lot of things to be argumentative about right now. Um, so, you know, that's, that always has to be a bit discerning um, for the individual. But that would be what you would do. And, and locally, it's very easy. Right now they have it set up that all you have to do is call your, I always encourage people if you have insurance, then call your insurance directory, Google what your symptoms are, and you're gonna get tons of people to choose from. And that way almost, I would, I would say pretty much everyone now is using online services, so. Um, all of that stuff is reimbursed. Now for our 35% of the population that's not working, that no longer has insurance. Mm. And the state is definitely a resource and they're paying for that for people for free. Really? Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, that's yeah. great. That's great to hear. And then um, even there's the suicide hotline. Yep. That, you know, of course is out there as well. So yeah. Oh, yeah. So the ba the basic message I would say is that just reach out, get help. You know, um, there's resources. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you can reach out to your friends or your family or um, your immediate groups and even those Facebook groups that you're in, um, you know, telling people how you're feeling, what's going on, sharing. I think it's important too for people to be honest with themselves. This is um, part of the lesson to me of this whole uh, 2020 and the ascension process that we're going through right now. Um, and that is to be really authentic and really almost to a point of painfully honest with yourself and with others. And, you know, someone's pissing you off, sharing that, you know, sharing your feelings, being open, being honest, and, and you know, let's all, uh, you know, it's not this pretentious game anymore. Mm -hmm. It's more of um, being authentic. I think one of the striking things that I've been talking about is an astounding level of empathy and an opportunity for empathy because being that I touch so many different types of, of pockets of things, whether it be medicine or psychology or criminal justice or all these different levels, um, I've never experienced a time, at least in my lifetime, and I'm only in my fifth decade, is collectively across the globe, this has impacted everyone. Yeah. Unless they're in a remote tribe somewhere and they don't have access to um, first world and third world problems, right? It's, it's been astounding to me that that, that that opportunity for that level of empathy 
has really lifted and elevated everyone to this other level of connection. And I think I'm turning that into such an amazing opportunity and a positive thing that it's not unheard of or atypical to be struggling with this. Right. Whereas before, if we struggled with things, it's you kind of shame about it. You kind of don't reach out. You, you sort of think, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, I don't need help with that. But now for the most part, it, it's being encouraged that, oh no, it's okay to talk about this because it is collectively, every single one of us are touched by this in some way. Whether that be a loss of someone, whether that be, you know, taking care of folks right on the front line. I have, you know, having been a nurse here before, I a lot of my best friends still work in, in medicine and it's it's been a rough three months. Yeah. People. Yeah. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know, and there's a lot of question about around what this is and what it means and why it's happening and you know, brings up a lot of anxiety and, you know, and then we're questioning authority and we're questioning these rules that we have to live with in these masks we have to wear. And, you know, it, it, it's really interesting. The other day I was wearing my mask and I was dropping off something at FedEx and it needs to go out that day. And I, just made the deadline and the woman's like oh no I'll send it out on Monday and because I had the mask on I didn't speak up I didn't say no this needs to go out today you know which I would have normally have done and it was interesting because the whole idea of the mask was like shut up don't say anything you know just be seen and not heard mm -hmm. and and I really felt that energy so, so strong. Mm. And I was mad at myself for not speaking up. And then I realized, oh my God, it's this energy of the mask. And, yeah. and it, it brought up a lot of things for me because it was my childhood. In my childhood, I was raised, you know, you should be seen and not heard. And, you know, no one, I just felt no one was listening or no one could hear what I was saying. And it was like um, that energy was coming up just by wearing the mask. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't like full on anxiety, but there was a level of anxiety there that um, like, you know, we, it, the thing about it, it hits us in unexpected ways. This anxiety is coming up with this um, pandemic and then of course the racial thing going on now and all right this. the layers and layers upon layers of things that have bubbled to the surface that have always been there we've always had viruses we've always had racial and um issues and racism and we certainly are subjected to that here we know that very well um yes and it's, it's just this, I feel like it's this new awakening um, of, of taking the layer off. And I, 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 what I'm struggling with, I think, in this particular time and walking myself and watching clients and helping them is it's okay if you're not ready to come out of that bubble and that shell because the layer and the lid has been lifted off. Everyone needs to do that at their own pace. What I'm having some discomfort with is that being forced on people because that forcing them to to speak up and be authentic and do all these things because the, the lid has been taken off I feel like that's creating another level of anxiety that people just <laughs> aren't equipped to just manage all of this stuff in their head all the time I think everybody just needs to come out when they're ready to and figure out how to manage collectively how we're going to deal with this and folks that are ready to pop out and you know do that more power to them i think it's it's fantastic we need that in our nation right now because this is an elevation for everyone but i do think there is this other level of a catchment of folks that just aren't quite sure how they feel about all this stuff so that's okay that i feel like that needs to be okay yeah yeah we just need to all 
meet everybody where they're at mm -hmm. and let everyone um, develop and ascend and move at their own pace mm -hmm. and allow the universe to unfold just as it should. And, you know, the only that I was listening to Bouchard, I don't know if you're familiar, he's a channeler, but he was saying, and that, you know, put yourself in the eye of the storm. Mm -hmm. And we know that very well here on Kauai because the mm -hmm. eye of the storm <laughs> went over the island yeah. <laughs> in 1992. But yeah. basically, like there could be chaos going on all around us. And to put ourselves in that place where there is stillness and we're connected to our hearts and we're um, just in that feeling space. And I think the most important lesson of all this is to constantly check in mm. with how we're feeling. Mm. I mean, that's the one thing I've learned. Like I'm constantly like checking in like, do I feel like doing this? Do I feel like doing a post? Do I feel like going here? Or, yeah. you know, feeling into every action. And if you're getting a no, honor that mm -hmm. and not go there or not do that, that thing. And, you know, even though it's like, well, I do it all the time, but. No, no, times are different now. That's funny. You uh, use the fly into the eye of the storm um, analogy. I use that in my trainings for, building resilience for service professionals actually really? and I have a fabulous video that I use in my trainings of um, for folks that don't know we have a lot of hurricanes and hurricane watches here so they send up the mm -hmm. C-130s from the Coast Guard and they fly through the storm and drop out markers throughout the storm until they get to the eye and so okay. that tells us exactly where we can track hurricanes and um, when you watch this video, your palms will probably start sweating because you're, they're videotaping the, the folks inside the C-130. And you know these, these guys are cowboys. They love this stuff, right? They're hooping and hollering and all this stuff. And then they get in, I'm getting chicken skin thinking about it. They get into the eye of the storm and it's just this beautiful blue sunny sky. Mm -hmm. But they're surrounded by chaos. And so that, that idea, that visual, that experience is something that I teach people to manage their anxiety. It's, it's up to us to get into that eye of the storm in a way that that's where we're living our lives from, is from that peace, stillness. And the only way to obtain that is to, to use the skill set of getting there. Oh, that's true. Med through meditation an experience of doing that um there's just a whole lot of people living in chaos right now they don't know what end is up in their lives and they're trying to make the decisions within the chaos of the outside of the storm whereas all of our discernment needs to be made within that center it's uh, i'll have to see if i can find that link it's just an amazing video i'd love to see that and i'll have to send yeah. you the link about bashar talking about uh, being in the eye of the storm. Yeah. And um, you also mentioned that, you know, this is going to be a crazy year. Obviously, it already has been. Yeah. It's so funny because we thought 2020, yay. I know. 2020, <laughs> it's like what we've all been waiting for. And it's been in that, like, what the heck? This right. Is what we One thing after another. Yeah. Oh, my God. And so, well, the thing is, like 2020 is 2020 vision, right? Mm -hmm. We use that expression, you know, to see really clearly. But also 2020 hindsight is also to see behind us. Mm -hmm. So again, that's putting us in the center, seeing ahead and behind. And so yeah. we're in the eye yeah. of this clarity. So it just has so many layers and so many meanings that make sense. Mm -hmm. But um, the idea is that we are just at the beginning. I mean, we have just this month, there are three eclipses that yeah. we're going through. Wasn't that spectacular? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, the full moon. Um, I mean, you know, harvest of that. There's so much going on. And um, there's more to come. That's, that's the message. And, you know, so I, I don't know if you heard, there was some sort of asteroid that was out there to the size of a football field that just... Oh, no. Oh, you missed that one? Yeah. I missed that one. We were too busy watching the space station go by. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So it's like, okay, what else is going to no. happen? Aliens. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> but, but it's like, you know, so we, we're, I feel like we're, we're going to have to get some really thick skin. Ah, uh, yeah. To, to, you know, because already, you know, there's been so much happening and, and, you know, financial, um, relationship, uh, everything is going on. People are questioning and things are breaking down on all levels. Businesses are closing left and right over here. It's like yeah. nothing is, you know, people talk about going back to normal. Well, yeah, no. see that happening, at least not here. The, our, our one movie theater pretty much that we had here closed. So mm. that, you know, I mean, it's like this, our world is, is changing. And yeah. um, I'm not always saying it, it's for the better or the worse, but it's just changing and it's not looking like it's going to go back to what it was before. Mm -hmm. So coming into this new space, uh, we're going to need some tools to deal with all this stuff. Well, and I think one of the one of the tools that comes to mind, just in a psychological perspective, is looking at this as desensitizing us to what's to come. Mm. And desensitizing us also builds up our resilience along the way. And that's you know one of the interventions when someone's been through trauma. That's how you work through trauma and provide treatment for that. So I kind of look at it in that way that I'm sort of grateful in a way that things have been happening in a way that's been dosed out to us, even though they've been kind of horrific things. It still feels like it came in doses to me. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just my perspective, but it, but at some level, if there's more to come, Think about the resilience that we're building up right now, not only with ourselves, but with our families, how much our, 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 our now 10 year old has adapted in three months, how much my husband and I have adapted to this weird way <laughs> of running our lives that we would have never thought of before. Well, how, tell, are, me, tell me a little bit about how your son has adapted. I think he's adapted better than we did. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I you're loved being great. home. I think you're, you're so, <laughs> they can handle change so easily. Yeah. Um, well, I think kids love being home with their parents. Um, yeah. You know, they, I think they miss their parents. Uh, so I think that's been a huge thing. I think um, I, my husband and I were joking the other day is I don't know if it's developmentally a 10 year old or it's this has pushed him but i said i feel like we're moving into the summer of grow the blank up um oh, because yeah. grow the <laughs> grow the hell up oh grow the hell up. <laughs> yeah that's what it feels like because this it's almost like he's gained this new level of independence that was within a week he had to really step up in a house and do his own thing with the class, in home class, because we were both working from home for eight hours straight. And it did not feel good to keep saying, Not now, honey, not now. Okay, I'll be with you. And can you give me till two? And, you know, it's just like in his mind, I got this. I can go make my own lunch. And it started that small to the point now is he's running a lemonade stand every weekend now that we can be out and about oh, and yes. you know he has financial goals <laughs> Ted, you know all these different things he won he rode his bike halfway home from the park the other day he's never done that before which i grew up with that but not in honolulu though uh -huh. so so i think that and then i think the other piece of my husband and i adapting has been 
a newfound respect for each other's space in the house. Mm. Whereas we are always kind of had that, but now it's been almost intentionally created. Mm. Um, so things like that, it's just where we didn't really have to think about that before. We really right. didn't. Right. That we everybody kind of convened after work and school, and we did the evening thing, got up, did it the next day, and now it's like, oh, I just, I just need some quiet. Can everybody just be quiet so I can think and write this document or whatever, or have a meeting? Every, three different meetings going on in the house at the same time. And yeah. So I think it this level of adaptability and um, consideration and. Mm -hmm empathy and compassion that we're all going through this together. Mind you, there was the first couple of weeks, it was not pretty. <laughs> it wasn't pretty at all. <laughs> I bet, I bet, yes. Oh my God, I got you running around. Oh. I may have skills, but I'm still a mom and a wife at the end of the day. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Adaptability and that building that resilience and I'm not fearful. I don't want to be fearful of what's to come. That's not my philosophy on how I live my life. Mm -hmm. It's the groundedness that I work on with my clients that I think it's important not to, to feed into that. Um, maybe a little bit of uh, curiosity. I'm, I'm, if I could peek under the hood and if somebody could please, please tell us what's going to be next, that'd be great. Yes. I know that's not going to happen. So. You know, the lid is off though. I What's the saying? The cat's out of the bag. I mean, it, there's momentum. I don't think there's any putting that cat back in the bag. No, I totally don't. And I would say that um, one of the things, total benefits of this whole thing, in a sense like you might agree, is um, our families have gotten closer. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole idea of family and supporting and helping one another. And um, I know during the whole COVID, uh, Dolphin Touch here was closed and I was helping my husband's business and he was so thankful to have me there during mm -hmm. that whole thing and his crisis and what was going on and appreciated me in a whole different way. Yeah. Uh, and... <laughs> And it was, it was nice. It was nice for us all to be, you know, and then he would support me on different things down here. I needed some maintenance and, you know, yeah. so he participated in my little world and I participated in his little world. But prior to that, we kind of were separate. We had our separate little worlds and we weren't interacting or interfacing much. Yeah. Uh, where now we opened up a whole new, um, respect and so I got to see him in his world more yeah. and he you know got to come over and help me in mine so it was it, it's been uh, nice to be with the family and I'm sure having your son home I, I I'm sure in the beginning it was a little crazy but you know after a while it's still like oh it's kind of nice like, yeah he has three gardens now that he started and tends to so that's been his passion project for the summer <laughs> it's great i know that i saw him give a plant to his teacher yeah that was so sweet so was... kind. He's, he's very into carnivorous plants right now so it's a oh. interesting passion <laughs> i said if it catches a rat it gets thrown away i'm just saying <laughs> right right yeah, okay. yeah. yeah boys will be boys boys will be boys yeah yeah, it's um, it's new day, it's a new dawn, as they say, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, do you want to share with people something that you know we're talking about um, offering support? And one of the support things we want to offer is a class mm. that can support and help people through these challenging times. Um, you want to talk a little bit about what that might look like and how that might work? Yeah, I know we were talking about maybe collaborating and having a class. I'm not sure how often we could we could consider if it's if it's once a month or a couple of times a month and uh, figuring out a way to have people sign up and um, get together and just really offer support and 
it's not looking at it as anything clinical or anything pathological. It's really, I think, coming together and, and with the pretense of learning skills on how to manage yourself in and amongst these really anxiety provoking times. I think that's yeah. something to think about. Yeah, I, I was uh, sharing earlier and I wanted to pull it up again um, that Oprah, mm. um, Oprah Magazine just had uh, a cover that said from warrior to warrior. <laughs> And I love, yeah, if you get a chance to check out her latest um, Oprah magazine. And she has quite a few articles. One is how to overcome anxiety. Uh, Deepak Chopra talked about breaking the cycle of anxiety. Um, uh, Mele, how to keep your anxiety from taking over. You know, that's a good topic. Uh, how to manage anxiety. And uh, the day I realized I couldn't handle my anxiety alone by Andrea Pedersen. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely a, a topic that um, comes up for people. It's mm -hmm. definitely something that uh, it'd be good to talk about. And um, yeah, I have a whole story about an anxiety attack I had in the ocean with the yeah. dolphins. Oh, and it was an awakening process for me. It was part of my awakening process. Maybe in my class or something, I'll share it. Yeah. Any last okay. words you want to share with everybody, Lisa? Um, just along those lines, I did create a, I'm in the process, maybe about two weeks I'll have it done, an anxiety course, Anxiety Connection is the name of it. So I'll be um, offering that to your um, group too, if that's something they're interested in. Um, that's a lot more deeper experience for people with anxiety in business and life. But um, as far as you and I are concerned, I'm pretty excited about just being able to support people in a way that just moves the needle so they're comfortable in managing their anxiety with, with simply with skills, because that's what it's about. It's great. And you have a book, do you know, somewhere? I use it all the time for reference. <laughs> Bad apples. How to feel good even when rotten things happen. This is what all of my programming is about. And it's really about um, no matter what life throws at us, how do we keep moving and growing? Now, is that book on Amazon? Is that mm -hmm. where people can find that? Bad apples. Yeah. Right. And how can they get a hold of you? Um, email or phone is fine too, but email is drlisahartwell at gmail.com or that same as my website, drlisahartwell.com. Nice. Easy, easy peasy. And we are friends on Facebook, so they can yeah. there. Um, Hartwell Therapy and Consulting is my business page. Love to have you. I do lots of inspirational anxiety support there for people. Nice. Yeah. Well, it was so nice to chat with you today. Lisa. It was so much fun. It's so nice to just to see your face and hear your voice. Yes, yeah, same here, same just here. Hanging out. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, we could do inter island travel now of the 16th. So right, that's we'll, the 16th. So we'll have to do a I don't know. I may have to do some shopping. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> are you near Waikiki or where are you? Um, no, we're about maybe 10 or 15 minutes up mountain in Manoa. Okay. Yep. Nice. That's from the university. So yeah. Get the best of both worlds. We have the mountains and the ocean. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, if you ever come to Kauai, if you feel like a vacation, you want to come here. <laughs> yeah. Well, evidently you have some carnivorous plants over there in uh, LA. That's where my son looked it up. And he wants to hike by LA, LA to go to plants. I said, I think we'll just go to the nursery and yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they'll have it there. Yeah. I have to watch. I, yeah, I haven't walked around there and gotten bit by a plant yet, but. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That would be so fun though. 